Okay, we can start the meeting. Dear participant, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to wish you a warm welcome to this online international conference co-organized by the Center for International Forestry Research, the World Agroforestry Center, and the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. I'm Dr. Abdonawono, yeah. yeah. scientist okay. based in the regional office of Kikiyaoundé. Sorry, Dr. Abdonawono, to moderate this important conference on community-based forestry, and we really hope you will appreciate the exchanges that we will have from the key speakers. We invited around the table people with great experience, and we're quite sure that we'll learn enough from the, what they have been doing on community forestries around the world. Uh, without spending time, let me move towards the, the opening session. Uh, Dr. Richard Dr. Richard Eba. Uh, Dr. Eba is the a senior scientist Dr. in the department. He is based in Yaoundé. And he has been working on forestry issues for more than 30 years. In many simple he has been very happy to the Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I know that the in Spanish. Nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the organizers of CIPAO, I want to welcome you to this session entitled Learning from Experience Between the Effectiveness of Community-Based Forestry. I would like to express our gratitude to Dr. Almasia for preparing a keynote address to our session. My gratitude also goes to the members of the panel who confirmed their I interpretation. I especially thank everyone who is online to follow this webinar. As you know, community-based forestry has been practiced since ancestral, ancestral times as a resource management approach and it contributes to the resilience hey, of Objective, including production of forest goods and services, protection of culture. Community-based policy is also a policy of the future. If we believe the recent Glasgow Declaration on Forest and Land Use, which refers to empowering the communities uh, and that donors commit themselves to support communities. This webinar is we hope, an introductory event in a series of activities that before it come and FAO will carry out for at least one year on community-based forestry. Once again, thank you, and I will let the floor to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Richard Ebachi, for this introduction that gives us the opportunity to introduce the key address of I mean, Mr. Duncan, who will present. Uh, I hope to hear. Can you please make the presentation of Mr. Duncan? Please share the screen with the presentation of Mr. Duncan. Mr. Duncan is a team leader and principal researcher in forest and prosperity. He works for the International Institute for Antania, Environment para la and Development. De he is currently focusing Don Duncan, on knowledge generation with para... the forest e, and farm e, facility. E, e. And he is trying to work to see okay. how best to support local forests and farms. Mm. Prior to joining the Forest Farm Facility, he managed Forest Connect, 
that supported locally controlled forest enterprises Population as an alliance of more than 1,000 practitioners in at least 94 countries around the world. So we are lucky to have Mr. Duncan today for the we Thank you very much, Abdon. Um, I'm afraid I can still hear the Spanish tra translator in my ear, and it's very off-putting. Um, so I'm not sure whether we just can sort that out. Just a second, Mr. Duncan. Uh, Dini, if you hear us, please check your equipment. We hear the, the, the interpreter speaking, which makes the sounds very difficult. So please check and make sure that we can go forward. I'm sorry, Mr. Abdon, it's coming from Tomojin, the interpreter. She speak in the floor, not in the system. Thank you. So, so how can we correct this? Uh, Ms. Tomo Jim, if you hear, please speak in the speaker uh, in the interpretation system, not in the floor. Thank you. Okay. okay. So I will also propose you send a message directly to the person because you can do so. Great. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. I think we can resume. Mr. Duncan, you have the floor. Great. Thank you very much. Um, well, it's a great uh, privilege to be here. My name's Duncan McQueen, and I'm, I'm uh, the head of forestry at the International Institute of Environment and Development. It's a privilege to talk to you about community forestry, and you can see the many roles of community forestry in the pictures on this slide. Um, community is an important word. It means uh, caring for others, serving the public good. And so community forestry is all about collaboration of people with one another and collaboration with nature, balancing the trade-offs that they find between making incomes and protecting the environment. And in an era where planetarily damaging inequalities exist because nation states are competing for power and corporations are competing for profit, a community forestry offers a, a different alternative, a more cooperative future um, of people working with, with nature. So um, what is community forestry? Let's uh, look at it broadly rather than putting it in a particular constraining box. No two communities are alike. And so community forestry embraces wide biocultural diversity. It includes indigenous peoples, who are unique guardians of biodiverse forests. It includes other local communities, often at the forest frontier and more market oriented. It includes uh, farm smallholders who plant trees and work together to pool their knowledge, negotiate better prices and share costs. And it includes processing clusters of sawmillers and furniture makers, non-timber processors and artisans. Finally, it includes those who plant and maintain trees in urban landscapes and architecture. And it's important to remember when talking about community forestry that the value chains uh, of community forests often end in urban areas, in wooden construction and charcoal, food and other non-timber forest products. So we need to have an integrated plan for community forestry that links community forests with their markets. 
Well, why is community forestry so important globally? Firstly, uh, community forestry has an enormous social scale. Of Earth's 7.8 billion people, almost 2.5 billion are indigenous peoples or local communities. And 1.3 billion of those are highly forest dependent. So that's a third of the world's population that's involved in some ways in these communities. Secondly, the climate impact of community forestry is huge. Indigenous peoples and local communities occupy more than 50% of the land and forests globally. And yet so far, they only have legal rights to about 15% of the forests. They're vital for any climate solutions. Thirdly, in terms of economic power, we often think of small community forestry or farm smallholders as insignificant, but collectively, they have strength in numbers. The gross annual value of combined small holdings has been estimated by IUCN to be between US 0.8 and 1.3 trillion US dollars. And that makes community forestry and smallholders globally the world's largest private sector by some margin. Finally, community forestry can efficiently deliver some of the things that the global public need. There are numerous studies that now confirm that indigenous peoples territories are better at protecting forests than protected areas set up by the state. So I, uh, community forestry is good for conservation. Secondly, uh, we, we know that community forest areas, farmers working in forest areas are more efficient per unit area at producing food than say corporations in terms of, of the food that actually reaches the poor as well. And finally, community forest areas have to balance meeting different needs of society. And so they're critical in delivering the sustainable development goals, often the only source of income and revenue for meeting the sustainable goals, sustainable development goals locally. So how can we make community forestry effective? Well, in a series of dialogues that were held almost 10 years ago now, um, we, we worked with investors and community groups of different sorts to come up with an understanding of how to make community forestry effective. And it involves four key pillars. Firstly, we need to strengthen community forest organizations to ensure they're both locally accountable to the people in the area and also have financial management skills to be able to interact with outside entities. Secondly, we need to ensure that community groups have secure tenure because that is critical to make sure that people are encouraged into longer term investments in things like tree growing and forest management and protection. Thirdly, we need to advance technical know-how so that people planting the right things in the right ways, uh, keeping them free of pests and diseases that are a, a growing issue in terms of climate change. And fourthly, we need to invest in profitable businesses that make sustainability attractive so that the incentive for community forestry is also linked to local livelihoods. Now, from the forest and farm facilities work over the last decade now, um, I've got just five tips about uh, how to make community forestry more effective. The first is really to understand and explain the benefits to local people of working together. 
That means working together in local groups, first tier groups, to share production costs, share information, and improve your negotiating power with markets. But also, one can organize regionally to add value added processing equipment and technology to provide marketing services for local groups, to provide services to local groups and finance. And thirdly, at the national level, at the third tier national level, community forest organizations can be federated to talk with government about making policies more enabling and perhaps acting as a channel for finance development and climate finance to flow down to the lower levels. Internationally, community forest groups are sometimes uh, joined in associations like the Alianza Mesoamericana that can have uh, an impact in global discussions like the recent climate change COP. So you can see that in Guatemala, there's many hundreds of local community groups, 11 regional groups, one national federation and a regional alliance. And in Guatemala, they have secured this pro bosque law to guarantee 20 million US dollars per year for smallholder producers. And the AMPB at the fourth level has created a new uh, climate finance mechanism to support community forestry. But it's not always possible for community forestry to act alone. In other countries, it can be a real advantage if you join community forest groups into national farmer federations who have better setups, communication infrastructure, marketing infrastructure, and so on. So tip one, organize to thrive. Secondly, it's very important that community forestry gives returns to the community. So build business incubation into those organizational tiers. This is a, a diagram showing the new uh, Ghana uh, Forest Farm Federation. And you can see it has three zones, a forest zone, a transition zone, and a savanna zone. And inside GAFAP, the, the organization, there's a, a national business incubation team. And that provides services to many businesses working in these different zones. And, and serving over a million members that now belong to this uh, federation. So if you're interested in knowing more about business incubation, the FFF has been producing both books describing it and toolkits for how to do that. Thirdly, use that growing business incubation capacity to broker policy round tables to mobilize finance and support. In Vietnam, the Vietnam Farmers Union has been uh, uh, brokering these roundtables at commune level, district level, province level, and national level. And it brings in private sector and government officials to talk with community groups to resolve problems that affect them in the market with policies and so on. Um, so, one of the success stories from Vietnam was the investor who you see in the bottom right hand side. He was brought into a policy round table. He wanted to secure the supply of cinnamon. And so he co-invested with the community group in a processing factory to produce 12 different types of cinnamon product. So mobilizing finance, both within community forest groups and then co-investment with buyers can often be an easier route to finance than, than conventional banks. Fourthly, it's very important that uh, community forest businesses are constantly staying active um, and not getting static. Um, you have to evolve in business to survive. And that means that it's really helpful if you in, install um, a risk management process that happens on an annual basis. 
so that community forest businesses, they take stock of their business objectives, they identify risks that might be to do with the market, policies, climate change, their staff capability. They identify which of those risks is high priority, which has a high probability of occurrence and a big scale of impact. And they choose those risks to address in the year ahead, assign somebody who's responsible and monitor progress. In Ecuador, we saw the COVID-19 crisis affecting the ability of local community groups to market their products. And so one of the cooperatives in Ecuador developed a, an internet-based uh, online marketing and delivery website as a proactive response to solve one of the risks they faced. So use risk assessment to keep you alive and evolving. And finally, um, especially in the face of climate change, try and diversify community forest practice and business to build resilience. COVID-19 has been a big threat over the last years, but as we look to the future, climate change risks are perhaps even more of a concern. And when we interviewed 41 different uh, community forest related groups in six countries, their top priority was to know how to cope with a ever more variable climate that's affecting planting, plant survival, what they can sell and so on. So it's very important to build resilience and that's not just about ecological resilience. It's also about offering new services and support mechanisms to your members selling and marketing new things in different ways, building up your physical infrastructure so that you can cope better with climate related shocks in the future. And you can see this uh, community forest group in Madagascar who used to be producing peanut oil, now diversifying into aromatic oils um, so as to, to have uh, less risk of complete failure. So those are just five tips for making community forestry more uh, effective. Uh, you can read uh, more details in the publications that I've tried to show on the screen. And now I'll hand back to our moderator and thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Duncan McQueen, for this elaborated presentation, very comprehensive. Thanks again. We can understand that talking about community-based forestry, we really have to think broad. We need to think about market issues. We need to think about policy. We need to think about the living condition of local communities. We need to think about the sustainability of the landscape that are targeted. So there are a certain number of issues we need to bear in mind. We need to strengthen the capacity of local communities. We want to succeed community-based forestry. We have to secure tenure for local community. And there is a great need of developing a kind of technical knowledge to push forward and address the challenges coming from community-based forestry initiatives. And of course, there is also a need to invest to make community-based forestry attractive and to ensure returns to the local communities. Because if it is not the case, it is obvious that we will be dealing with things without taking into consideration the realities of the area. Thank you so much again, Mr. Duncan McQueen. We will now seize the opportunity to introduce to you a video that will present a case that is specific to Nepal. And from it, I think we'll also learn a lot from that. So please, can you introduce the video presenting the case of Nepal? Nepal has a very interesting history uh, with respect to forest governance. And before 1992, all rights to forests were held by the state. And so a decision was taken after a lot of debate to actually devolve rights to forests 
uh, to communities. And so the law gave communities rights. Since 1992, about 20,000 community forest user groups have been established legally in Nepal. Women are, are principal beneficiaries of the rights that have gone to uh, the forest. It turns out that women are quite often the community members who collect the non-timber forest products. So uh, it's women who harvest uh, the lemongrass. My name is Dadi Kala Paudel, Kheti Kisan Garinja, Kisani Hum. I am the Hamro Ward Ko Ile Nirbhatit Maila Sadasse Pani Ho. Yo Paanj Bar Sabayo. Hamre Yo Yo Jat Yo Jat Pani Rasai Na Hamre Ode Jat Ko Chai Na Yo Sama Besi Cham. Hamle Phursat Ko Samay Ma Rope Ka Chiz Aru Inaru Leban Garas Pama Roja Sito Nela Hamle Chai Rope Ka Chau. तो तेल आरु आम्र सामुदाय लेकिन दिन सा आमले पैसा दिन सं परिकार पनी पायो अब बोन मारा बन जरे बो झाड़ी जरे बायो जैसे वहाँ का उन्हें ले आवा कौशल करने तो आवा ना है नहीं आवा ये मॉल जो बोन हम अतिओ पनी खेरा ना जाए नहीं आवा बोन पनी वहाँ रहूंगी चाय नहीं पता रहता जो दिल रख नहीं ना जाए नहीं जो तो मॉल बनाऊंगी बनियो आये मैं मॉल बनाइयो आये मैं चाहे आपनों घर को मूली संगा यहाँ जान चाहिए हमरो चार ऐर रहा नहीं बनना तो पड़ देना बनना मन लगे के है ना हमरो अधिकार थे ना महिला का अधिकार पनी पाए का सम और आर को पूरा अब जंगल को पनी हमरो अधिकार हमरो अधिकार छा यहाँ अधिकार ना भाई हमें आओ ना पाओ थे ना हमरो अधिकार छा अधिकार नहीं भाई रा हमले यहाँ उपा बग्गर ना पाए नहीं मने ये अ खासकरी सामुदायिक बन बहुत ही ना बने समाज अपने वाइले खास के ऊपर वक्ता आरे को जीवित को पार जन्म ठाड़ो असर पार में थियो ये लेकर तो खेरी ऊपर वक्ता को जीवित को पार जन्म यो प्राकृतिक रूप में अधिकार हो ये लाइट से राज्य ले पहलो अधिकार के रूप में चल रखने पर सके Well, this is a tremendous example of a community forest uh, uh, enterprise. And the, and the most significant one is uh, elephant rides that are offered to tourists. Uh, so this is proving an important source of income for the uh, community forest user group. Huh? <laughs> आ बहुत सामा करीब करीब दो ही करोड़ जति हमी आमदानी कर सों तो मध्य हमी 25 देखी 30 परसेंट हमी कंजर्वेशन में खर्च कर सों और और को कुरो हमी और ले आ यो शिक्षा में खर्च करे सों All these uh, examples that uh in the form of different enterprises that have now come up in the context of Nepal, especially in the last 10 years or so, uh, everything has been only been possible because the communities now have been granted the right to access the resources. And that has only been possible because of the rights devolution in the context of Nepal. <laughs> what this has also facilitated is that uh, the communities can now partner with private enterprises, for instance. Uh, they may not always have the capital or the equipment to process and produce what they want to produce. So in a way, this access to the market uh, of community forest user groups has been facilitated by the rights that have been devolved in the form of tenure rights. I think we're, we're finding that leadership in the community is very, very important. It's also a factor of regulation. Uh, we find that there's quite uh, considerable differences across Nepal and how the, the district forestry office uh, uh, interacts with the community forest user groups, particularly on economic enterprises. The uh, strongly 
केही मात्रामा खुकुलो गरेको खण्डमा हामीहरुले धेरै काम गर्न पाउँछौं नाम चाहिँ आफ्नो नामबाट चिनिने अवसर पनि हो पाइयो हैन र सबैले चिन सबैले चिन्नु पनि भयो यो फल्ना हो फल्नाको श्रीमती भनेर चिनिनु भन्दा आफ्नै नामबाट चिनिनु एकदम गौरव लाग्यो के केही त गर्न पर्यो जंगलको लागि एक जंगल एक उद्यम भन्ने एउटा आहा छ हैन केही त गरम न हामी बातचित बेला सन केही गरेर त मर्ने हो केही गरम अब हामीले गरेको देखे भने हामी भन्दा पछाडीकोले नि गर्ला यसो गरेको थियो नि हाम्रा आमाहरुले दिदीहरुले भनेर गर्ला Thank you so much for this nice video that can help us to have an idea on a specific case of community-based forestry. What is really interesting here is that we can see how women can take advantage of the community forestry to improve the livelihoods, how they can organize themselves to value natural resources, globally speaking. And we can link this video to the last presentation from Mr. Duncan McQueen, which means that community-based forestry is also something that can go forward, bearing in mind the needs of local communities. And that's how we can make sure that we progress with specific objectives and making sure that the practices are for sustainable uh, manner that can be taken into consideration uh, in a long term not just to improve the livelihoods of people, but thinking about the future generation. So ladies and gentlemen and dear participants, we will move to the next item, uh, the round table on the theme learning from experience to increase the effectiveness of community-based forestry. We are lucky to have around the table very key people who have been working on that issue for decades and who will share the, their experience on how we can go forward. How did they succeed to solve the type of challenges they, they, they have been meeting along the, route, the, the, the along the line? So we are lucky to have with us Mr. Anat Centeno, uh, Dr. Honore Tabuna coming from ICAS, uh, Dr. Uh, Julius Seogohun working for the African Development Bank, and of course, Mr. Karma, who is also close to the FAO project and who will share his experience. Let's start, let's start by Ms. Centeno. Ms. Centeno is a community leader from Peten, Guatemala, and served as the secretary on the board of, trustee, of directors of the Camelita Cooperative. Mr. Centeno is very interested in valuing non-timber forest products specifically, and she works to improve the value chain of several of them, including Z-leaf palms, all species, Raman nut, and so on and so forth. So, Ms. Tenu, can you please tell us how you'll be dealing with all this and which link can we establish with the community-based forestry? The floor is yours, Ms. Centeno. Ms. Centeno? Muy buenos días, muy buenos Thank días. You. Gracias por la oportunidad que me dan de compartir la experiencia desde la Asociación de Comunidades Forestales de Petén, en Guatemala. Eh, eh, somos eh, la Asociación de Comunidades Forestales de Petén, que aglutina a 21 organización de base comunitaria que hacen manejo forestal sostenible. Mm. Eh, cada una organización cuenta con sus respectivos planes de manejo autorizados por la que es el ente rector de, la, de las áreas protegidas. Observa la biosfera maya, específicamente en la Zoom. Somos, eh, eh, somos un modelo de, de desarrollo rural para Guatemala con el apoyo de la organización internacional y de organizaciones nacionales e internacionales. 
hemos logrado ser una, una entidad que representa en temas de incidencia política y a todas las organizaciones. Eh, somos, eh, como bien decía, somos una organización de segundo nivel. Eh, el trabajo que realizamos en las organizaciones pues, es básicamente de agroforestería. Eh, trabajamos las cadenas de valor de Chate, Ramón, Madera, Pimienta, Miel, Turismo, Turismo Comunitario. Eh, déjenme contarles que desde hace aproximadamente 25 años eh, nos conformamos las organizaciones para hacer gestión. We adopted these actions and we have been acting with the government of Guatemala to support the local community. This has not been very easy because we had to manage resources in a virtual manner. Hacer la gestión de manera conjunta. And all of this enables us to manage the resources together. We also are taking into account all the elements which have helped us to manage together. And these are the elements which we have been able to accomplish for the past 25 years. Improvement of the living conditions of the people through the sound management of forestry resources. So we are therefore providing support. We ensure that organizations, community organizations are able to have a political impact and we hope that uh, on the efforts of all and sundry we shall be able to have people who have direct benefit from our actions. We are also trying to empower communities from uh, of people working in civil society organizations so that people are able to manage forest resources. Why do we say that we have uh, interest in managing community forests better? All of this has to do with the fact that we have We have three to 5,000 hectares of land with trees that we manage. And at this point in time, the community counts on its own technicians. We have a large human capital. And this helps us to manage communities in one way or another. Our COFO has taken into account all these objectives and we are looking for ways through which we can create an office for business relations. We are looking forward to creating markets for the commercialization of our goods. We have a negotiation model at community level, which helps us to ensure the exploitation of the products that we produce.
so that governments can be able to receive uh, support and work with government organizations. With regard to our relationship with government, we have received five additional concessional authorizations. As I was saying, ACOFOR's major activity is to improve the living conditions of our people and to create new production value chains for the benefit of all. I'm going to focus a little more on some aspects of our actions. We organize our communities, taking into account the interest of men and women. Value chains create more economic benefits for everybody. And there are a number of activities that men can carry out with um, in their communities uh, alongside their household chores. In ACOFOP, we have several activities that we carry out on a regular basis. And we have tourist activities where women have been uh, empowered to assist tourists at local level. An important element is the fact that we also engage in investment each year. We invest about 400,000 to 500,000 US dollars in the prevention of bushfires. And this means that these policies make sure that uh, fires do not break out in communities. So we are working to protect all of our forests and all the plots of land that we have received in terms of concessions. We have over 500,000 hectares of land that we are responsible for maintaining an upkeep. And we have relationships which uh, are quite sound with government officials and for this we do everything to make sure that bushfires do not attack our forest reserves. Para poder obtener recursos y apoyar diferentes actividades que las comunidades hacemos todos los días. It's an institution that helps us uh, support communities and we work tirelessly to ensure that we meet our objectives. De esa manera nosotros podemos In this regard I could say we have made significant progress in the activities that we carry out. And with regard to the traditional work that we do, today we can carry out our actions in an organized manner without hitch. We have a section 885 of our national law, which speaks about authorization for concessional agreements, and we respect all those procedures. Okay. We have been requesting more concessional agreements for the possession of land. I would like to come back to you later. Uh, thank you for this first intervention. If you can conclude, please, for this first intervention. Okay. okay, I think Ms. Centeno is done. Thank you so much. I'm really sorry for the French translation because I got a message that the translation didn't work. And I hope the technician will set the equipment in such a way that next intervention, the translation will be very interesting. Thank you so much. I will come back to Ms. Centeno later on. 
Uh, I would like now to move towards Dr. Honore Tabuna. Dr. Honore Tabuna uh, has worked for several international organizations, including the World Agroforestry Center in Central Africa. And he's now, uh, let's say, in charge of, is the commissioner for the environment, natural resources, agriculture and rural development department from the economic uh, community of Central African state. So, Ms. Honore Tabuna, knowing that you've been working on those issues for more than 30 years, what can we learn from your experience? And uh, what's the link with the policy that is being implemented at the level of the economic community on Central African state? You have the floor for five minutes, please. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Moderateur. Merci aussi aux... Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. I would like to thank the organizers for inviting the ECA to this meeting. And we are based in Libreville in Gabon. I am the Commissioner in charge of Environmental Management, Management of Natural Resources, Agricultural... Un plaisir que je viens ici au nom de 11 États membres de la CEAC et au nom de l'ambassadeur Gilberto de Apiadade, qui est le président de la commission, pour partager avec vous euh, rapidement, euh, euh, comme il l'a dit, hein, j'ai travaillé ou je travaille sur ces questions-là depuis plusieurs années, avec euh, euh, l'idée de rechercher euh, la valeur ou bien euh, l'idée d'ajouter plus de valeur économique à euh, ces questions euh, de capital naturel, dont la forêt en général est un des représentants, et euh, la forêt communautaire en particulier. Euh, ça a été rappelé. Alors, euh, euh, j'ai que cinq minutes. Donc, en cinq minutes, je ne peux pas tout dire. Euh, normalement, il me fallait plus de, plus de temps parce que je représente 11 États. Mais bon... On va réduire ça à cinq minutes, juste pour vous dire que euh, euh, le fait de travailler pour la CEAC et en lisant euh, et en regardant, en écoutant les uns des autres, nous sommes là dans un secteur économique qui est encore à l'état embryonnaire, puisque bien qu'il fonctionne, mais on se rend compte que les revenus générés ne permettent pas aux populations euh, euh, d'améliorer leurs conditions de vie. Et comme cela a été prouvé partout dans le monde, il faudrait donc passer à un autre stade. We are going to move to another element which requires an innovation to make sure that all of us make progress. And this uh, goes with markets. And we cannot stop simply at a level of local markets, which will start thinking of how to move to national or regional markets, most especially for them, I would say for the people. And uh, we are in a period where we are working towards uh, the African continental free trade area, and we need to make efforts to roll back all tariff and non-tariff barriers so that the people who manage community forests should be able to sell the produce of their forest well beyond their geographical forest. We have uh, a market of over 200 million people on the basis of scientific information from the sub-regional office of the economic uh, regional, the Economic Commission for Central African States uh, with an office based in Yaoundé. Uh, it is mentioned that the market would reach about 400 million consumers in the nearest future, and we need to have a share set aside for community forests. This means that for the ECA, it is a regional approach that will help to solve the issue of uh, developing community forests and its economy. So we are going to take all these elements on board. And in the sub-regional forestry scheme, we would see what we can do about it. In Central Africa, you know we do not have a forestry policy, but this issue of community forests has been taken into account in the strategic plan that we adopted and asked heads of states of ECA to adopt. So we therefore have a political willpower at sub-regional level to develop 
the economy of community forests. At this point where we have it today, the issue is to know what would the economic sector of our Central African forestry uh, economy be in the next 10 or 15 years or in 20 years. One of the things we need to do is to make sure that, or oh, I think this has already been incorporated in the policy, is to look at the institutional framework, given that we need to work at regional level. We need the federation or the confederation of our states. We need to put our community forests together in Central Africa. And this federation or this grouping should be strong enough very strong, I would say, and help it carry its actions without hitch. The next thing has to do with capacity building, capacity building for all groupings. These groupings need to work hard. How can we carry out this organization? Generally, we thought that uh, all functions of an enterprise could be con taken into account. That is production, processing, trade, marketing, accountancy, etc. People need to get specialization in specific areas of competence and we see what exactly is the relationship they have with other stakeholders from civil society. We can, we can take on board consultants to help them play the role and uh, do the job of that enterprises need and uh, issues of marketing, etc. Given that I only have five minutes, I would say, Community forests are quite important for all of us because in Central Africa today, we have the confederation of small and medium-sized craftsmen. This is the only sector today, which is doing tedious work. If we take uh, the issue, the timber sector, you see that there are a lot of craftsmen working in the timber sector to develop uh, the sector. So a lot of investment is expected for things to take off. Um, I am here in Brazzaville within the framework of a conference organized by the United Nations on the economic value of natural capital within Central Africa. We noticed that there are so many organizations with specific outlined agendas and you would see that people have different objectives that they are pursuing in a meeting like this i see that people we have here are all experts and what we should do together with eca semac the states and all those involved in the area of research and economy should put themselves together and adopt a true development model for community forestry. What is a model that can be adopted? Once this model would have been adopted, we would see how we can add value to what the people are doing independently. There is nothing we can invent. The entire eco world economy on natural capital, etc., proceeds from these things. And as far as biodiversity is concerned, you would say that a lot of people had done so many things in the past. I would take the case of uh, Coffee, coffee, which of course was a spontaneous crop. You see how some countries have developed on the basis of the sale of coffee. So they probably cannot, some countries probably cannot do everything, but we need to open up doors or to all these people who work on community forests, people who come from forest areas, etc. So we need to open the doors to all these people who are coming from research institutions, etc. So in five minutes, this is what I could tell you, or to say that we have a vision at the level of the sub-region for the management of our forests in the environmental or forestry management schemes. We are finding ways through which we can incorporate a community forest. It is a regional program for forests, which head of states adopted. And we are going to make of this program a permanent program, permanent. And we would work with all those who have a say in community forest management to have a shared vision of, of the objectives that we pursue so that 30, 40 years after, we shouldn't be at the same level. This is business. 
it is not just about engaging in philosophy, it's about engaging in business. This is what the people expect of us. There are no two ways in, uh, to do business. You need to develop the market, produce goods, and you develop every other necessity. Mr. Moderator, this is what I had to say so far. We have a real willpower or uh, the political willpower from heads of states to develop the urban forestry economy uh, sector and this is also a part of green economy sector in central africa you know central african countries are opening up their doors to green economy this is an element which you must take into account to help the people engage in environmental protection you know that central africa has just been plebiscited out of the eight wrecks in the african union the central africa REC has scored the best in terms of environmental protection and biodiversity protection. And you know that thanks to the issue of, uh, uh, you know that Central Africa today is protecting more uh, its forest uh, by limiting deforestation. You see what is happening in the Congo Basin for area. We are protecting our forest even more. So we need to delve out of uh, reflection into real transformation of our capital towards having contributions that will lead to the diversity of the economies of our countries and promote a real private sector that is active in the area of forestry. I would like to end here at this level. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honoré. We are going to come back to you uh, for take home messages. Uh, intervention. Uh, what we can bear in mind is that business is very key. The issue is not only to make sure that we manage our forest ecosystem sustainably, but we should take advantage of the products coming from those ecosystems to improve the living standards of people. And it is key to work and to invest on business. The other issue is that you're thinking about a kind of model that can be used all over Central African Republic, I mean, countries, to make sure that we move towards a common, I mean, we move towards common, common solutions and that we make sure that we build a kind of uh, policy that can help us to go forward. And of course, you mentioned that there is a need of reinforcing the institutional framework in Central Africa. And you underline that there is a great uh, will to go forward with the different state. So we'll come back to you. Let's move to Dr. Julius Chupese Tigoron, who is Chief Forestry Officer at the African Natural Resources Center, African Development Bank, based in Abidjan. And prior to joining the bank, Dr. Tigoron worked with C4, FAO, and Biodiversity International. So Mr. Julius, I know you've been working on those issues linked to for the financing mechanism, the government issues, livelihoods, and so on and so forth. Can you tell us a, a little bit, what can we return from the experience of the Congo Basin Forest Fund, you know, in Central Africa? I think working for the African Development Bank, it is very key that we talked about that aspect of the problem, the financing mechanism. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Thank you, thank you very much, Adon, uh, and thank you for this initiative. I think it's a very good one. Um, uh, not to repeat my what you said about myself, uh, I'm now at the um, African Natural Resources Center of the African Women Bank for the last uh, three years. Um, then, uh, with respect to our discussion today, I think it's very important. I think Duncan and uh, Dr. Honore, they, all of them have already pointed out the, what we need to make uh, community-based uh, forest management a success. When we look at the tenure, uh, the need for, for, for organ proper organization, um, uh, the need for us to ensure that uh, we have a good uh, business capacity and then the technical know-how. And then, but with respect to finance, which is a Big, the one of the biggest hurdle is, uh, is in, with respect to the business environment. So I will be taking an example from the Congo Basin Forest Fund, which was a trust fund 
uh, set up uh, by some international partners. It's, it's actually a multi donor trust fund. Uh, actually, uh, would main driver being the United Kingdom, uh, Norway, and Canada. These were the main people that uh, put in some pledge for money and put into this initiative. And then the fund, the trust fund was hosted by the African Development Bank for a period of uh, almost 10 years. 10 years, I can say, because the first phase of this program was 10 years. So it ended in 2019. It was actually um, the UK uh, pledged uh, almost 60 million euros. Norway joined them just a year later to put in 60 million. And then the, Canada, the Canadians came in uh, later in 2013 to put in 40 million euros. Um, the objective of this uh, fund was to alleviate poverty and mitigate climate change uh, by reducing deforestation in the Congo Basin uh, through sustainable forest management. And the, the then uh, president of the bank said that during the launching of the, of the fund said, if we succeed and we must, the people of the Congo Basin will have made a major contribution to humanity. He was the then president of the bank group, uh, Donald Trump. That was in 2008. So the justification was of, the, of this fund was that the oil, the people that put in money, they thought that there was no need for this deforestation in Central Africa. There was need for us to see that we have food security and better livelihoods. They considered the forest of the Congo Basin or Central Africa as a global public good. And there was need for local communities in terms of ownership, we increase ownership because uh, uh, in, the, in, in the Central Africa region, we have more of uh, public ownership of forest. Actually, the, the, the entire program had uh, five teams. One was sustainable forest management. One was on livelihoods and economy development. The second was uh, on measurement and uh, reporting and verification of deforestation in the region. The third, the fourth was on benefits for carbon markets and ecosystem services. And then the fifth was building uh, capacity on right plus in the region. Um, then, <clears throat> In terms of projects, projects, a number of projects were submitted, but in terms of projects uh, selection approval process, um, there was a call for proposal by the governing council. Uh, and then there was shortlisting by the secretariat of, of the fund, and then endorse, endorsement of those shortlisted uh, projects by the governing council. And there was project appraisal and processing, and then finally a final approval by the bank. In terms of the project portfolios, in total during the lifespan of this, there were actually two calls for project proposal. The first call led to selection of 15 projects, the second to 25 projects, and there was one project that was actually uh, endorsed by the governing council, the governing council of the project. So in total, uh, we had 41 projects endorsed, uh, endorsed operations, and then the, the bank approved 38 of these. 34 of the projects went to, to the end, succeeded, but at some way between the line, four of them were canceled. In terms of community management, as I'm going to see, tell you now, 13 of these projects were run by government and original governmental institutions of COMIFAC and REFIAC. Um, but out of these, 27 were actually run by civil society organizations. Uh, operating the Congo Basin. So you see, uh, this included community-based organizations and all forms of NGOs and all forms of uh, civil society organizations. Actually, the, 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 the CFF involved uh, in, uh, 10 countries, uh, Burundi, Cameroon, Central African Republic, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, uh, Congo, uh, Republic of Congo, Rwanda, Chad, and Sato and Pacific. In terms of uh, the actual cash, as of 31st December 2018, that the project ended, we had coming out of the funds that were, we had uh, 73, almost 74 million US dollars that were, was uh, committed, euros that was committed. And out of that, 63 million, almost 64 million was disbursed, giving a disbursement rate of about 86%. 
So that is about the project. What were the results? So we have some, I don't know what I would say about the results in the next uh, discussion, or I just say, okay, it's what I see here. So the, four, the result, main results were classified in four different headings, sustainable forest management, livelihoods and economic development, monitoring, uh, reporting and uh, verification, and then benefits from carbon markets, ecosystem services. So as we heard very well uh, from Duncan's uh, discussion, uh, that tenure is very important. Uh, one aspect for, for success of community-based forest management. So land use plans were developed for uh, 34, almost 35 million hectares of forest. And then more than one, 100,000 men and women were trained on sustainable management of forest resources. Nine congo Basin countries, nine countries in Congo in the Central Africa region had red, uh, red Redneck lands. Over 40,000 men and women had improved access to land and property. This is what we're talking about uh, tenure security. And then the project also saw 100, about 100,000 additional hectares of forest land under community management. Then the project put in place uh, four beneficiary mechanisms. Uh, mechanisms. So they were, those were the main results. So I've done maybe for the lessons learned because something came out uh, very, very interesting uh, that Doc can talk about. Um, the project had a lot of success stories, but there were a few uh, downturns that a lot of lessons were learned from the project. And uh, then uh, I think we may have to discuss this next. Or oh, I should just go and finish, Abdo. Uh, Julius, I think you will wait for a while because yes. I know Nori was coming from another meeting. I would like yes. to speak to him, to let him finish his- uh, Then I will end here. That is all about uh, uh, the Congo Basin Forest, Forest Fund. Generally, briefly, that is the brief, how it went, the project, the Congo Basin Forest, uh, Congo Basin Forest Fund was set up, okay. and how it was implemented, and the main results. So I will end here for now, and then we'll continue with the lessons later. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Julius for your comprehensive intervention. We will come back to you to see what's the lessons we can draw to make sure that we contribute to improve the community-based forestry initiative around the world. Thank you so much. Uh, because I know uh, Dr. Honoré Tabuna will be leaving very soon, I would like to come back to you, Honoré. Qu'est-ce que nous pouvons considérer comme des leçons qui peuvent contribuer au niveau politique en Afrique centrale, à améliorer le processus de la foresterie participative. En 3-4 minutes. S'il te plaît, je n'ai pas bien suivi la question. <laughs> Sorry, I did not hear the question. Honoré, thank you very much. Thank you. I would like to ask you, I'm saying that I know we are in a process where we think we can do a lot better on the basis of experiences that we have collected so far throughout the world. You have presented the situation of Central Africa to us. I would like to know what proposals you can make to ensure that we get things better and improve the process of participatory forestry or community forestry in Central Africa and across the world. This is a very good question because you're saying across the world, this is a global issue. We need, first of all, to make sure that those of us who provide support to these communities need to put our hands together and have a world-class initiative on this issue. It will be a positive thing to see that C4 and other organizations working on the issue of forest management be together in a kind of consortium, we would define a vision and common objectives that would help us make progress. We have what it takes intellectually. We have the natural resource, which is diversified. We even have uh, the cultural exp expertise. Indigenous people have know-how, which gives us information that can yield economic spin-offs, or we can use uh, some of those uh, things for uh, the production of cosmetic products, etc. The issue is to know 
which which organization can join hands with which organization to see to, to it that would make progress eca has its pro vision ecas has a vision etc in my opinion what we need to look at closely is the fact that we need to merge our efforts you see that c4 ecas ecraft etc can put their hands together and see how we can develop forestry or forest management at a level of ec uh, of acas we can build a framework document and make sure that we work together with the network of world network on community forests uh, i believe that uh, with you who are in the area of research some of us politicians we can put networks of marketing and forest management six systems to do something together in central africa we have just merged all higher institutes of learning which shall be invited to attend a meeting in brazzaville next week and we are trying to see how we can merge our efforts we have a med model of a private sector which is indigenous which exists so far and if we put our efforts together if we are well organized we can quickly improve the livelihoods of our people people have a market and uh, let us put our hands together and do business states in central africa or analysts or politicians are all in agreement we need to start making things happen those who want to help the people form a consortium and we make progress together next element is that we need a network of all these community forests and we would have uh, a major world program set up on the economy of community forestry it's a different story when we talk about communist about community forests it is something that can generate a lot of revenue where everybody makes a contribution towards improving the livelihoods of our people and generating wealth for the state so this is what our states could do this is what i can tell you at this juncture so uh, i say we can do a lot of things we are present and we are the people who have the possibility of uh, marshalling resources speaking to politicians etc the fact that i am present here with all the activities that i have on my hands i decided to sneak out and attend this meeting because it is useful for us to develop the issue of community forests i am not talking about developing community forestry but developing the economy that uh, can be generated from forestry management how can we add value to the activities that uh, community forests can generate thank you very much I know you, Merci, but you have accepted to join us for this important event. Thanks a lot. The key lesson from your message is that we really have to create a kind of network of community-based forestry initiatives in Central Africa. You started doing some uh, initiative. You started taking some initiatives on that line with the forest preschools and so on and so forth. I think your message has been understood. Thanks a lot for your intervention. I will introduce someone, Mr. Kama, who is Chief Forestry Officer, a Social Forestry Infection Division from the Department of Forest and Park Services. Of S'il vous plaît, est-ce que je peux partir? S'il vous plaît, Abdon. Yeah. Oui, merci beaucoup, Honoré. C'est bon, merci, c'est très gentil. Merci. Mm. S'il vous plaît, Abdon, parce que j'ai un autre engagement. Oui. Est-ce que je peux partir? Parce que j'ai un autre pas. engagement. Vous pouvez partir. Can I leave? You can leave. Thank you very much, Onu. Thank you. Nous sommes prêts. Nous sommes prêts. Nous sommes prêts pour ce consortium, et nous devons le faire. We are ready to put in place the network. We are ready. Okay. So I was about to introduce Mr. Karma. Mr. Karma is Chief Forestry Officer at Social Forestry and Extension Division from the Department of Forest and Park Services of Bhutan. Mr. Karma experience covers agroforestry plantations, 
and non-wood forest products management, of course, with the aim to improving the governance and livelihoods of local communities. So we have the opportunity to hear from Mr. Kama, who will tell us about the experience from his country and how this experience can contribute to improve the, 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 the I mean, the community-based forestry initiatives around the world. So Mr. Kama, you have the floor for about five minutes. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Thank you. So I, I don't have to introduce myself. And I'm very happy to be in this forum, learning from experience to increase effectiveness of community-based forest. Very interesting. If I may share my experience, I think when we talk about the community-based forest management, we've heard a lot about it, the benefits of community-based forest, economical benefits, social benefits, environmental benefits, and if you like, cultural benefits. And how do we make more effective? How do we make this community-based forest management more effective? I say more effective because I want to emphasize more on uh, effectiveness of community-based forest. It becomes more effective because it gives uh, a room to look at the responsibilities, empowerment, and also the ownership. And more so, it becomes more effective because community-based forest management allows to recognize the very important aspects of the social part. If you look at the social landscape, because it gives us uh, community-based forest management, gives us to look at the social landscape, through that lens, we would be able to recognize who are the vulnerable group within the village or community. So it becomes more gender sensitive. And it is also, if you like, a biodiversity sensitive. And it is also becoming more psychological and health sensitive because community-based forest management, community-based forest not only contributes to economic, social, environmental, and cultural, but it becomes more effective by allowing to reckon who are more vulnerable to, you know, uh, to see climate change, if you like. And look at the, uh, uh, look at the, uh, during the pandemic time, uh, the community-based forest uh, management allows the communities to form a group and to be in, uh, in one group and become more uh, functional in terms of uh, decision-making, in terms of um, preparedness to cope up with the, uh, with the disasters. And also it becomes more networks you know, within themselves to help each other. Which gives, which gives uh, the community-based forest uh, you know, more effective in terms of, you know, in, even during the pandemic time. Uh, it would become more effective. We don't know the, how the future will look like because just now we are, we, are, we are experiencing this pandemic, but in future we may have more dangerous or more, more you know, disaster, which, which the community-based uh, forest will, um, will 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 be very uh, be prepared uh, to face this you know uh, whatever the disaster that comes related to pandemic or even if you think more uh, related to climate change uh, as we know that uh, climate change is happening uh, it's uh, it's coming and there will be more if you do not really act uh, you know there will be more climate change related disasters so the community-based forest will become 
more effective during the, that time because uh, it allows, as I said, uh, it allows uh, to you know to you to identify the most vulnerable group within the group, and will also facilitate uh, to provide opportunity for them to be prepared for any disasters. So what we need to do is we need to really lift and uh, lift the community-based forest at the local level and even at the global level. But if can, we can also think uh, to make this community-based forest more, recon more recognizable in COP. Because what is more important is the local people. Uh, why we are managing, uh, why we are having the policies, why we are having the legal framework. We are having all these policies and legal framework in order to make communities more, more you know, productive in terms of economic and more socially cohesive in terms of social capital and more environmentally, um, uh, uh, environmentally sound in terms of contributing the community-based forest in sustainable management, forest management and more culturally, culturally uh, preserved and, and, uh, and you know, to reckon their identity. A community-based uh, uh, forest makes uh, an institution which will be more effective during the disaster time and which can be more responsive because it, has, it will build the social capital within the community, uh, within the communities. When, we, when they build the social capitals, uh, because once we have the community, they have the norms, they have the networks, they have the trust, and they have the governance and collective actions. And that will make them more responsive and more effective to, you know, to manage the force sustainably, as well as to be prepared during the, any kind of disasters happen to them. And community, uh, I think we should, uh, we should believe that uh, community-based forest management is one of the one of the best best ways to 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 uh, to manage the forest sustainably and also to, to make the communities more vibrant in terms of economic, social, and environmental, and even the cultural and these are the very important things. I think one aspect we can look at is the uh, payment for environment services. Now, if you look at some of the communities, like if there's a water crisis in a community, now people look at the community forest management groups to manage the water crisis. If the water source is from the community forest, and if there's a water crisis, they look at the community forest management group as solutions because they can manage the forest and they can also make the water more you know available and constant flow of water and make available to the communities that is more important other thing is i wanted to focus is uh, you can look from the different dimension that community forests can be a uh, health sensitive you know now Somebody uh, the, in the previous, uh, the, somebody from the previous speaker said that you can see the community forest from the health point of issue, point of view. Uh, community forest, community based forests can be more, uh, more saleable, in, saleable, saleable in terms of health because tourists can come in the community forest and they look at the uh, forest. If the forest is more ecologically sound and also sustainably managed and very good, uh, you know, uh, environment, then people can use that forest for the health reasons. When you go in the forest, people will definitely feel that it gives them psychological confidence and psychological, you know, um, uh, health uh, to the people who are wanted to you know, visit uh, the forest for the benefit of the uh, community, for the benefit of the health. <clears throat> so I feel that okay, the community Dr. based Dr. This first intervention, please, Mr. Uh, community based forest management is one of the best 
ways that if you want to if you wanted to if you want to manage the forest sustainably that's the way forward that we need to do it and even looking from the protected point of view protect forest protection point of view if you like a protected areas if you do not involve communities in the conservation in the to manage the protected areas it would be very difficult so later on i'm also i i think i'm getting some chance to talk about the challenges and also talk about the improvement that we need to focus in future uh, for community based forest management yes. so i'll Mr. just stop Kaha. here Mr. i'll just Kaha. stop here yes i know you've been waiting for a while let just conclude your intervention you have one minute then i will not come back to you what's your take home message what's your take home message my uh, take home message is you should believe on community and you should trust the community and you should you know build the community from the point of you know having stable tenure system so they should have legal backup and they should be involved in any kind of sustainable forest management so without involving of the communities i think it is very difficult for us to manage the forest as well as it's very difficult for you know you to make the forest uh, for climate change you know if you like improve the forest for climate change that's it thank you so much thank you so much mr kama your intervention is so interesting the take home message as you said we need to take into consideration two dimensions the local and the global level and we need to make sure that we bring the solutions linked to the social economic and environmental concerns so thank you so much for your intervention i will go back to ms centeno i hope she's online and this time i will give you the floor for one minute only one minute because we are running out of, out of time one minute for your take home message ms centeno you have the floor Mr. Centeno, are you online? Is Ms. Centeno online? Okay. Okay, so you take home message, please. See? Just to conclude your intervention. Pues, eh, el mensaje básicamente, básicamente el mensaje que yo daría es que debemos de unir esfuerzos, ¿verdad?, para, para poder eh, salir adelante y como bien decían los compañeros, buscar alternativas que de verdad conlleven al, al mejoramiento y calidad de vida de las, de las personas de las comunidades a, a través de la búsqueda y apertura de mercados donde se puedan ofertar los productos forestales provenientes del manejo forestal comunitario. Ok. Eh, también eh, debemos trabajar enfocadamente en el fortalecimiento de capacidades para, el poder, para que puedan tener el poder de autogestión eh, y poder... Eh, desarrollar las actividades con mejor calidad. Eh, yo creo que eh, uniendo esfuerzos podemos también contrarrestar eh, impactos negativos del cambio climático. Pues, pues las actividades que realizamos de manejo sostenible Creo que son actividades de alerta temprana para mitigación del cambio climático. Básicamente por ahí estaría yo con mi intervención. Okay, Madam Centeno, I think you're done. 
Are you? Sí. Okay. Thank you sí. so much to Gracias por el espacio. for this great intervention. Nos vemos pronto. Uh, I, will have to, I will move to. So let me move to the next speaker, uh, which is uh, Honoré has left, she has finished, so it's okay. Let me move to uh, Julius Tegohum. Julius, we all agree the financing mechanism is very important, very key for the success of community-based forestry. So what's the take-home message? What do you think should be done to make sure that we improve the way things are being conducted on the ground? What we need to recognize uh, in the forestry sector that any intervention, um, actually I have uh, six stakeholder messages uh, in terms of lessons on implementing forest projects, in terms of scaling up a trust fund, setting up a trust fund and managing it, in terms of donor relations, and in terms of communication and evaluation of such trust funds. But so I will summarize this by saying that um, we need inclusive participatory processes uh, and to know that these processes take time. So any forestry project, we put three years, we may not get the required results. Uh, we cannot demonstrate results in forestry sector within three years. We need to allow ourselves some time uh, because most projects that link to the forestry require changes in behavior and a lot of other things. Setting up the networks and all that, it requires time, so we shouldn't have project less than five years. The second thing I want to say is that uh, for an innovative trust fund that has to deal with forestry, we need to recognize that the possibility of failure and knowing that uh, for success, success may come from failure if failures are understood and learned from. So in a project like this, we had uh, 86% then we had a lot of success, up to 80% of indicators, but we also had a few failures. Uh, but we should know that these failures should not make us feel that we are losing, that we should always know that we can learn from those failures to move forward. And that ties to up to what Duncan talked about, uh, risk, use risk to identify development pathways. The risk here is that possibility of failure, so we can use that to define our development pathway pathways in all projects uh, that can be uh, governed by trust funds, financed by trust funds. I think basically for one minute, that is okay for me. Thanks. Thank you Hello. so much, Julius, for your intervention. I'm very happy you could come around. What we can take home, I mean, based on what we just said, it is very important to take into consideration a long-term planning. Because a project of three years will not be enough to transform the situation on the ground. So it is important to take into consideration the fact that we need planning in a long run. For instance, projects for at least five years, even 10, to make sure that we go forward with a key, I mean, key initiatives we need to transform. So thank you so much for your intervention, Julius. And uh, we, we are looking forward to continue discussing on the issues we've talked about today. And I, let me seize the opportunity now to move to the next step. Uh, during this uh, webinar, we've decided to launch the call for success stories on community-based forestry. And I would like to introduce, first of all, Jean-Claude Nguyenguiri working for FPO. Jean-Claude Nguyenguiri is someone who's been working with international organization for so long. He has spent a lot of time with uh, uh, the FAO, and I'm quite sure that he will tell us why did we come up with that initiative and what should we be doing before I give the floor to Divine from them. Jean-Claude, are you online? Jean-Claude. Can you follow me, Jean-Claude? Okay, if Jean-Claude is not online, I will go straight to Divine Fundem. Divine Fundem is a scientist in Sipori Craft based in Central Africa, in Yaoundé specifically. He works on the value chains and enterprises. 
And he has the opportunity to tell us what's the content of the call for successful, I mean, for success community forestry stories. Mm -hmm. So if you can put on the, the screen the call, I will be very happy. Divine, you have the floor, please. Thank you very much, Abdon. I don't know if these people are hearing me. I can far from the mic. Thank you very much, Abdon, for giving me the opportunity to present the call for success stories on community-based uh, forestry. Um, I think we have heard interesting uh, stories about uh, the successes of community forestry uh, across uh, Africa and Asia and even Latin America from the talks of Duncan, Anna and Kema. Uh, Julius also talk about the finance mechanism. But if you look at, if you listen to the literature, you will often hear that uh, more negative stories about community forestry, uh, community-based forestry than the success stories. So what we want to capture here is, do we really have success stories? And if yes, what are they? So um, our, our, the objective of the call is to identify some community-based uh, forestry success stories. Uh, for the preparation of a synthesis report, which will be used to provide evidence about uh, community forest success stories. So what can we actually learn from these stories and how can we use it or that, what can we gain from these success stories to come up with new interventions to use community forests in improving livelihoods and the forest landscape in general. So the, the proposed call uh, for success stories um, uh, should actually uh, uh, tell us stories about what actually, what factors contributed to the uh, success stories we are trying to describe in, 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 the, in the call for abstracts that we are talking about. So we should bring out the factors, which may be maybe innovations in the legal uh, context. They may be uh, well-organized producer groups as Duncan made mention of. There may be business or financial approaches, as uh, Honore talked about. It may be also the fact that it was very inclusive because it included a lot of youths and, and, and women in the entire process. So we are calling for success stories. The first stage is a call for abstract. We would expect abstracts of between 800 to 1,000 words. Um, with, uh, first, what was the, the content of the abstract? It should be a catchy, uh, it should be a catchy uh, title and, and an introduction that describes the context and major challenge that the success story tries to, tries to describe. Then the body should talk more about what change actually in the, the commit in the success stories or in the, in the context in which we, we, were, we are describing, what was learned in the entire process. We expect the, the abstract to come up or the success story to come up with powerful statistics to show numbers of what changed over the period that we are describing. If we also have interesting quotes, please add them in the success stories. So we, we, we expect for those who are interested, and I, I believe most of you in this call are interested in the success stories, who we'll expect that by the as from today, between today, December 7th and January 7th, uh, that is one month from now, we expect that you come up with, you send your abstract to us, uh, and the abstract should be sent to, uh, we will share with you the flyer that describes, uh, that, that uh, uh, launches the call for success story. You will send to floresmuno at cgir.org and also to Abdon Awono at cgiaro.org, a.awono at cgiaro.org. Can you type that in the chat? Yeah, um, really like yes. It. So we expect the, the, the abstracts to come in latest, January 7, 2022. Um, uh, as I said, the abstract should be between 800 to 1,000 words, and it could be in, any, in, in either English, Spanish, or French. Then we expect the full stories to be developed between January 29, between January and March, and, and March 11, we expect the full success stories to be submitted for those whose abstract will be, will be uh, selected. So between December 7, which is today, and uh, July 31st, uh, we are expecting to have a full list of uh, the, 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 the book uh, that describes the success stories uh, published by the 31st of July. So we expect that the 20 cases that will be selected based on the abstracts 
would be will be supported by uh, C4 Ecraft in collaboration with FOO to develop the full success stories that will be between 3,000 and 4,000 words. Without much ado, I've done, I think that is the content of our success story. So we are expecting all of you to send please to exciting stories that you shared with us for those who do not have the opportunity to present today or those who presented, please share your success stories to us. And the panel of scientists who at least um, will, will select 20 of those cases that we are going to sh uh, showcase in the, in, the, in, the, in the book that we, have, we intend to publish by July 2022. Thank you very much, Abdul. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Divine. Uh, we can then see that uh, we had the opportunity to share the experience from some people during this uh, conference. But of course, we have many other cases that people would like to put forward for people to know around the world. That's why we would like to get the final publication with 20 success stories that will be very key for the future of community forestry because we need to share what works and we need to show what we should be doing to make sure that we improve the process along the line. So thank you so much for your great presentation. We are moving towards the closing remarks. I hope uh, Dr. Jean-Claude Gingiri is already around for him to take the floor. It was a great pleasure to have all of you online. We will share as much as possible all the documents that we generated during this conference, and you will receive a message distributing all those. It is also a great thanks to the speakers. It has been very, very tremendous, very, very helpful. And with me, I know we all learned something from this important event. Jean-Claude, are you online for the closing remarks? Jean-Claude. Is Jean-Claude around? Yes, Jean-Claude is online. Thank you so much, Jean-Claude. You have the floor. Make sure you control your, your mic because we cannot hear you. Jean-Claude. I saw the answer from Jean-Claude saying that he is online. Maybe he has some challenges with the network. Jean-Claude, if you have, if you follow us. No, it's okay. Okay, okay thanks a lot, Jean-Claude. We can follow you. Yes, okay. Okay. Sorry, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, uh, okay. Uh, dear participants, uh, dear colleagues, uh, we have uh, reached the end of this important event. On behalf of uh, FAO and C4 ICRAF, I want to thank all uh, participants uh, for their time and uh, active participation during this webinar. My appreciation goes to uh, speakers and panelists for their uh, fruitful uh, contribution. Also uh, to uh, Abdon for being a good moderator for this, of this webinar. This event outlined the need to learn from the past experiences to make CBF more effective and reinforce the role of uh, community-based forestry has uh, uh, an appropriate mean uh, to assist countries in their effort to address emerging issues, such as halting deforestation, restoring forest uh, ecosystems, building resilience uh, in forest-dependent communities, and improving their livelihood. I believe that we have reached a consensus on this matter. The challenge is now to get uh, the commitment of participants to disseminate the call for success stories on CBF and uh, to submit abstracts. Dear participants, the success of this initiative is in your hands. 
We need your support and cooperation. Please disseminate the call for success stories with your networks. Invite your colleagues, invite your friends to submit an abstract. The launch of the first call for success stories on community-based forestry has took place today. After this first call, there is a need to continue to collect other success stories. As you know, there are hundreds of successful initiatives that can serve as models for future projects. I would like to take advantage, uh, advantage of this opportunity to invite other partners to join FAO and C4 Recraft in making this initiative more useful, giving the opportunity to countries to learn each other from their success and failures and putting forest dependent communities on the front line of sustainable use of forests and also action against deforestation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Jean-Claude. I think we all learned from what we heard during this uh, seminar. Uh, we now have to go forward and what we should bear in mind is that we need to distribute the call for those who have not been able to join us here. I think we still have a chance to let them know there is a process that will lead to a great presentation, I mean publication by the end of this year. And we need to select the key stories, the very suitable stories about community-based forestry. And I know the number of people we had during this conference were around 200 people moving up and down because some people have been coming in and going up. Thanks a lot for your great presentation. It is very, very appreciated. We are very happy for that. Thank you to FAO. Thank you to C4E We are all, we, we, we are together, like we say in my country. Thank you so much. And we wish you a very nice day. Thanks a lot and bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.